five. I trusted them to take care of my daughter. Shocking accusations of mistreatment. He extracted that child's tooth without an ounce of freezing. It was like I served him up to this monster. Do not bring your kid to this dentist. Do not. Please save your kid. And... Nikki, my son found a grenade near a pond. A victim of war and the long road to recovery. Two, three, go. He had a goal and he's determined to achieve it. He has affected my life more than I have affected his. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. What started as one Facebook post by a distraught father has snowballed into a massive police investigation. Charges have now been laid against a pediatric dentist in Halifax. He's accused of assaulting his young patients over decades. A W5 investigation reveals flaws in the regulatory system designed to keep patients safe. Look at the waves, look. The waves are getting so big. Walking along the blustery Cape Breton shoreline with her dad, Ryan, seven-year-old Peyton Binder hardly looks like a force to be reckoned with. It's very, very scary to think that my daughter went through this. I just tell her, you know, you're very brave for coming out and telling your story. Peyton's story begins November 10th, 2020 in Halifax, where she and her grandmother made the almost five hour drive from Glace Bay for an appointment with pediatric dentist, Dr. Errol Gom, chosen because they were told Peyton would be put to sleep for her procedure. She was terrified to go to the dentist. Most kids are scared to go to the dentist, let alone she knew she had to get two teeth removed, but my mom was there, so she thought she was going to be okay. You had trust that when you took yes. your daughter in mm -hmm. to have yeah. her teeth removed, that the most pain that she was going to mm -hmm. suffer was actually having the teeth removed. Yes. I trusted them to take care of my daughter, and they absolutely didn't. They, they did not take care of her at all. Peyton was led into the clinic room. Her grandmother, who's a nurse, was told to stay in the waiting room. Shortly after, she was alarmed by the sound of screams. Your mom, as an RN, must have been shocked to hear screams because Peyton was supposed to be sedated. Yeah, so she was terrified. Like, to hear Peyton scream, she went right up to the receptionist. The receptionist was like, yeah, it must be Peyton. She just couldn't take it no more. She just knew, like, I, I can't listen to my granddaughter cry like this. So she left, she went into the car, and kind of just, my mom was upset, she cried about it. But those screams from inside the procedure room were just the beginning. The family was horrified to hear what Peyton says happened behind closed doors. So she tells her that the dentist hurt her, and that he pinched her nose, and then held her hand over her mouth. And then when Peyton was crying, he told her that to shut up and that my mom wasn't there no more. And obviously, she was very hysterical and screaming at that point. Ryan immediately went online and saw public reviews of the same dentist with strikingly similar allegations. Reviews on RateMDs.com only go back 15 years. And throughout that time, there were allegations posted about Dr. Gong. It was the amount of people it was just unreal that said, do not bring your kid to this dentist. Like, do not, please save your kid. And I wish I would have seen that before I went. I didn't think that I needed to, to check on the reviews for my kid's dentist. Ryan wanted others to be forewarned. And so he shared Peyton's story on Facebook. And then the floodgates opened. And then all of a sudden, it just blew up. Like people were messaging me. All these people were like, well, wait, that happened to me. That happened to my kid. When you are looking at these posts of people who are saying similar things as Peyton said, dating back decades, yeah. what was going through your mind? I just couldn't believe it. How from 1970 to 2020 that this guy got away with this. I was just a loss for words. 78-year-old Errol Gom is facing an avalanche of allegations. 
Working at three clinics in Nova Scotia, Dr. Gom has been licensed since 1971. His specialty, pediatrics. Tracy Gates took her young son to Dr. Gom in 1993, and when she logged onto Facebook and saw his name in Ryan's viral post, she had a sickening sense of deja vu. What was your gut reaction when you saw the Facebook post put up by Peyton's dad? I was first thinking, this can't be the same dentist. But as I was reading, I realized that it was the same person. Everything just came flooding back. Tracy says when her son was five, almost 30 years ago, she took him to the same dentist. And her story sounds like so many others. Sitting in the waiting room, feeling helpless, hearing screams. I ended up leaving the reception area and going to the washroom and I just broke down and I just sat in there and cried because I knew he was upset. It was like I served him up to this monster and did nothing about it but cry and I didn't push it far enough. The appointment was for a routine cleaning, but Tracy says her son came out with two teeth pulled. He didn't tell her the other things that happened inside the procedure room until a year later. I said, do you remember when you had to go to Halifax for your dental appointment? I said, mommy has to go uh, to an appointment. And he just looked at me and he said, is the dentist going to spank you like he spanked me? And I was just floored. I just could not believe what he was saying. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, I tried to get off the table. And when I did, the dentist spanked me and threw me back onto the table. And when he put him back on the table, he put his hand over his mouth so he couldn't cry and told him to shut up. Now, a proposed class action lawsuit as the number of former patients coming forward snowballs into the hundreds. So in the statement of claim, you... Cora Lee Robert is a lawyer with the McGilvery Law Firm. The unproven allegations against Dr. Gom take up one full page. Can you just scroll through to show me what the allegations are? Slapping in the face, pinching noses while simultaneously covering their mouths with his hand. Holding face force force to the point of leaving bruises. Making verbal threats that he would inflict more pain. Threatening to remove another tooth if they continue crying. Resting the needle against their tongue in a threatening manner. Non-consensual removal of teeth. Initiating procedures before sedation or freezing. Freezing becomes effective. Restraining arms and legs with leather straps. Applying his body weight to restrain them. That is a long list of horrifying allegations. It is quite significant. How many people have come forward to take part in this potential class action? So at this stage, we've actually been contacted by approximately 480 individuals. 480 so people? Mm -hmm. I've spoken to folks in their early to mid 50s um, that recall these traumatic experiences from being a child. And just as recent as, you know, 2020, where we're seeing five and six year olds um, having also gone to see Dr. Gom. Dr. Gom has refused an interview. In an email to W5, his lawyer, Mike Brenton, writes, I advise my clients not to participate in media interviews while proceedings involving them are before the court. And so we went to Gom's home in Halifax in search of answers. But it was clear no one had been there for some time. W5 has obtained Gom's statement of defense to the proposed class action. The defendant says that all times his treatment of patients has been in accordance with professional dental treatment standards prevailing at the time the treatment was administered. But now it's not just parents and children who are speaking out with wild accusations. He was a monster in the, in the cubicle. He was Jack Hornhide. He was a lovely person to talk to, but when you got in that chair and that door got closed, he was a different person, a completely different person. We are calling her Catherine, one of Dr. Gom's dental assistants in the 1990s. She's asked her identity be hidden for fear of reprisals. You had a front row seat 
to what was happening behind those closed doors. How would you describe it? The office, when I worked with him, one of them, we had a soundproof door. And once that door was closed, the kid was put in the chair. And if there wasn't one ounce of cooperation, basically all hell broke loose. When you say all hell broke loose, what does that look like? Well, <laughs> it looks like hell for a child. The hand going over the nose and the mouth, with the child lying back in the chair, and him pressing down with the strength on the child's nose and mouth and screaming at them, you spoke brat, you're in my chair now. And taking the hand off after about 30 seconds and the child would be gasping for air, then replacing it again right away. Imagine a fish out of water. Like this? Yes, like this. Yeah, not pinching, like this. And whispering in the ear, you spoke brat, you're in my house now. Amongst a litany of horror stories, it's the memory of one young patient under the age of two that Catherine can't shake. All these decades later, she remembers the conversation she claims to have had in the procedure room. I remember him saying to me, pass me the 76S. That's an extraction for a second. And I said, but don't you want the blue first? The blue is what they call the freezing needle. I said, well, don't you want the blue? And he said, do you recall anything that happened to you at this age? And he extracted that child's tooth without an ounce of freezing. And I can see that poor child screeching cry now. He pulled out the teeth without any anesthetic? He extracted a little boy's tooth without any freezing. In fact, you say that some people have an actual term for what happens when they go to see Dr. Gong. They, once they're grown up, they have such bad memories they refer to as being gomatized. Coming up. I want to know if the dentist that I'm going to is under investigation. How did decades of questionable behavior go unchecked? This could have been stopped a long time ago. When W5 continues. Ryan Binder had no idea the power of one Facebook post. He took to social media after his seven-year-old daughter, Peyton, made horrifying claims of what she says happened inside the Halifax office of pediatric dentist Errol Gong. Peyton Binder went to the dentist last week. She left hysterical, repeating the same story about the dentist again and again. She said that he pinched her nose and at the same time held his hand over her mouth so she couldn't breathe it triggered a tidal wave of similar allegations and a proposed class action lawsuit involving almost 500 former patients spanning five decades. Some shared their video testimonials with W5. These claims have not been tested in court. He put his hand over her mouth and told her if she didn't stop screaming, he was going to remove all of her teeth. Earl Gom is a monster. He never, ever, should have gotten in dentistry. I wish I had been believed when I was younger about what I was talking about there. He was extremely aggressive with me, you know, grabbing my face, just extremely rough. And when I began crying and told him that I wanted my mommy, he got very upset with me. He yelled at me, he told me to shut up. I witnessed it with my own two eyes. And so I hope they get justice. We're calling her Catherine, a former dental assistant who worked for Dr. Gom back in the 1990s. All of these complaints, we're, we're talking hundreds of complaints, other people who work alongside also having concerns. How could this have gone on f for decades? I don't know, but I can tell you if they were a doctor, I'm sure the College of Physicians would have intervened immediately and had a look at this. That's what I feel should have happened with the Nova Scotia Provincial Dental Board. Instead of it being a boys club, come on, let's really look at what's going on here. It's one thing to have one complaint, but if there's multiple complaints, and you look at the common denominator. Tracy Gates, whose five-year-old son told her he was spanked and yelled at, says she tried to get the Provincial Dental Board of Nova Scotia to do something about Dr. Gom back in 1994. I wrote to the dental board and told them the story. Never heard back from them. So you filed a complaint with the dental board mm -hmm. detailing what, what your son mm -hmm. says happened to him, mm -hmm. and they never replied? 
He never responded. Not even a letter saying we've received your complaint, we'll no. investigate? No. How did, how did that sit with you? At the time, obviously not well, but I was a single parent with minimal income. I didn't have the resources to take it further. Others too tell W5 their complaints to the dental board over the years were ignored. Approximately 10 years ago, I had called the dental board uh, for the incident that happened to me when I was five years old, and they were supposed to get back to me, and no one did. My daughter, back in 1995, she was only 20 months old at the time of the incident. I called the dental board. They sent me out a form to fill out, which I did, and wrote a lengthy letter detailing everything he had done to my child. I sent it back, and I never, to this day, 20-some years later, have never received a phone call, a letter, nothing. Despite claims that complaints had been made and ignored for decades, it took Ryan Binder's viral post to spark action. On November 18th, 2020, just seven days after he put this up on Facebook, the Nova Scotia Dental Board held an emergency meeting. This is CTV News at 6. A dentist in Bedford has been suspended from practice after complaints of professional misconduct and assault. The registrar of the Provincial Dental Board of Nova Scotia has refused repeated requests for an on-camera interview, agreeing only to answer questions by email. We wanted to know the number of complaints since Dr. Gom started practicing in 1971 and how they respond to allegations that complaints were ignored for decades. They refuse to answer those questions, citing the Nova Scotia Dental Act, which they say stipulates secrecy of all matters that have come to the registrar. The dental board is supposed to protect us. They're, like, they're our children. How are we not protecting them? And all these complaints for years were just getting pushed aside. The only reason that this ever happened is because I did put it on Facebook. So. I want them to make changes. I want them, I want to know if the dentist that I'm going to is under investigation, is had have all these people put complaints and I, I want to know that. The Provincial Dental Board of Nova Scotia offers little information about dentists who have been disciplined. Since 2012, they have only posted four discipline decisions. But after repeated questions from W5 about why so few hearings are posted, the dental board updated its website to include that there were, in fact, 16 discipline decisions since 2010. But in those cases, a decision was made by the disciplinary committee not to publish the names of the dentists who were sanctioned or the exact details of what they'd done wrong. Across the country, dental boards or colleges have different levels of transparency, and Ontario appears to be the leader. You can actually type in a dentist's name and find out whether there have been any actions brought against them. It's also one of the only provinces that allows complaints to be submitted online. Quebec, Alberta, British Columbia and Saskatchewan post disciplinary hearings. Four provinces in this country, PEI, New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Manitoba, offer no details on dentists who have been accused or found guilty of wrongdoing. Patients Canada is a charitable not-for-profit organization and essentially we are there to try to embed the patient voice into public policy. Francesca Grosso, a patient advocate, says most healthcare professionals, including dentists, are regulated by a college or board. Their mandate is to protect the public, but colleges are often predominantly comprised of members of the same profession, which can create problems when it comes to disciplining one of their own. As someone who advocates for patients, what's your sense about the perception anyway, and in some cases the reality, of colleges that are made up mostly of dentists, policing other dentists. There have been a lot of instances where colleges do, do right and actually are, are responsive. But there's definitely a potential conflict that could be exploited and has been exploited uh, for sure. I think that we definitely have to completely 
revamp the way we look at discipline. There does have to be more transparency around complaints. There has to be more redress. It sounds as though you're saying that there's some concern that the protection of the public at times gets overshadowed by the desire to protect the profession. I think that would be accurate to say. And I think that sometimes the patient's rights are not uh, fully heard. I think that the patient's interests are not fully met and I don't think that they're fully protected. But this is more than just an issue of the profession investigating one of its own. It's also an alleged crime. And now, after a 15-month investigation, Halifax police have charged Dr. Gom with eight counts of assault involving eight former patients dating back to the 1970s. It was not a healthy environment. As for Catherine, who worked shoulder to shoulder with Dr. Gom back in the 1990s, she regrets staying silent, but says as a young dental assistant, she was too scared to take on a powerful dentist and so quit and moved to another clinic after just three months. You didn't say anything back then. You are saying something now, why? Yes. At the time, I didn't feel I could speak up. For a young person to go against a dentist, think about it. It's not something that you would just think of doing. You just kind of keep your mouth quiet and just keep your head down and work. And that's what I did. It was hard to hear my daughter telling me that, that I didn't protect her. So to hear her say that, that I didn't protect her, it was the hardest thing I ever heard in my life. I felt like I failed. Because when you think of protecting your daughter, you don't think you have to protect her from a dentist. No. A group of former patients has now launched a letter writing campaign requesting the provincial government review the Dental Board of Nova Scotia and how it handles complaints. 